Right then, everybody, welcome back to Angler Carl. Now, um, it's not something I normally do this recording on a weekend. Normally, my filming days are weekdays, but um, the missus has um, gone out, so I thought we'll come down to Ravenfield Ponds and do a bit of a feeder fishing session. Now, um, I was recently doing a bit of tidying up and I found this little bad boy. This is the Daiwa Matchman seven foot feeder rod and it is an absolute beast now one thing i will say with this rod it is so accurate at casting i have literally clipped up to the, the far bank there because i'm i'm hoping a lot of carp are hiding at that far bank that is certainly going to be the plan today uh, to go with carp so i'm using the Daiwa ends on the hybrid feeder with a Ringer's pellet wafter on a Guru QM1 size 12 with a bait band. Now, I prefer the bands over the screws uh, or the little bayonets just because I've found in the past that sometimes the carp will suck the bait in, get away with it, whereas on the band, because it's really tight, it's very hard for them to get that bait off and the reason why i like using the pellet wafters is because it blends in well with the band and i don't feel like the fish can see it that easy so um i'm using today as well some fishery micros that i had left over and all i've done to give them a little boost i've used some dynamite uh, sticky pellet syrup just a little dis just a little bit of information these fishery pellets are actually not ravenfields they was from a recent fishery ravenfield allow any pellets it doesn't have to be basically what i'm saying they don't do their own pellets just for those who are wondering and then i sprayed them as well with a little bit of bait tech spray i've done reviews on both these items you know so you can go back down the videos on the channel and check them out um and like i said because we're fishing for carp and maybe the odd bream i've literally got the wafters the ringers in the pellet color and they've also got the minis, the white ones. I'm hoping that one of these will work. And by the way, I just want to smell these. They smell absolutely beautiful. I love the smell of them um, Ringer's um, white wafters. They're so nice. So yeah, I just thought it'd be something good to do today. On the, uh, I know a lot of you people like the sessions. So we are doing, like I said, we're going to be here for quite a while. We're going to be fishing for roughly around about four, four and a half hours. Um, I think it'll be tough today, I definitely do. I think it will be tough fishing just because, as you can probably tell by the weather in the trees, winter is pretty much here, you know, the temperatures have dropped. Um, so I do think it's gonna be a bit tough. So I'm not gonna go crazy with filling this up and I'm gonna leave the feeder out there for about 20 minutes. Now, just to save on chopping up loads of the video, I'm only gonna film um, when we get a fish and if i can i'll try to get the video going when i'm when i'm landing into the fish just to show you how much of a beast this uh, feeder rod is so yeah i'm going to basically show you the best bits and if you do enjoy this lit just this session where it's just me chilling back you know grab yourself a cup of tea grab you grab yourself a sandwich or what have you and just sit back relax and enjoy this session you know because um, i'm looking forward to this and like I said, don't forget to do the usual subscribe, share, push comments down below if you win to fish. And if you don't win to fish, hopefully my videos are a way that you people can feel like you're fishing. And um, hopefully you people will enjoy this as much as hopefully I'm going to enjoy it. But like I said, I think we're going to have to be patient today. I definitely do. I will do a review also on this um, Daiwa Matchman 7 footer and I'll do a video further down the line about this rod but j today we're fishing for them nice winter carp and what's so weird as well with with this with the this rod being seven foot like the feeder arm's like as short as it can possibly be okay everyone bit of an update so far absolutely quiet i've just had a little bounce on the quiver tip but i don't think that was any fish and the timer is on 13 minutes so far. Well, nearly 14 minutes. Um, I do think it could be one of them where I'm just at the wrong end of the lake. But sometimes you get here 
and there's nothing you can do you know you're not going to go up to other people and start chucking you know feeders in you know next to them and stuff if they're constantly chucking in with their feeders it's going to spook the carp and i think a lot of pressure can really sort of get to them whereas sometimes i've been to lakes on pegs that are known to not be very good and obviously everyone's been at that end and the fish have like sort of moved up and i've ended up getting bites but like i said this is the first cast sometimes you just have to build the swim up i mean luckily we've got plenty of hours i'm just hoping the rain stays out because some plonker forgot to bring the brolly so we potentially could be sat in rain i did look at the weather and it didn't say it was going to rain but yeah as you can see we're just a bit further back than this so i'm going to do another cast at some point and then obviously this is the nice little setup everyone we've got the old um, power bank there to charge the phone but yeah i might have to switch over to these little bad boys at some point if we don't do anything on these the reason why i'm on these is because they've done me so well in the past and what have you but on the stopwatch we're nearly at the 20 minute mark so it might be a pulling job soon because that quiver tip has been very very quiet i just had a little thought whilst i was uh, watching the quiver tip and that thought was when you're clipping up everyone this is mainly for the beginners or maybe if you've never done it i don't know but this is i always find a good tip and it may sound obvious but like i say if you've just got into fishing it's uh, a very good tip so what i always do i always have my feeder on my main line and then i don't put the up length on till i've clipped up and the reason why if i was to maybe cast a bit too far and it went in the reeds there wouldn't be a hook to snag on anything yes you might get snagged with your feeder but there's a good chance you can get it back by pulling and tugging whereas if you've got a hook length on the end and a hook sometimes it may get stuck on something and then you're pretty much screwed whereas if you say if like you do it without it there's less chance of it so make sure you clip up at the start of your session that is the ultimate bestest way and also another little tip i've got you if you are in a clip keep your clutch a little bit i would keep it on the tighter side but make sure you up everything so 10 pound line nine pound up length because if you're on a venue like um on bridge pond the carp on here just pull like anything you're better to just up everything and beef everything up and as well the reason i'm using the Daiwa ends on feeder is because it's a nice small feeder but you can still get a decent amount of baiting but just enough that you're not sort of overfeeding the swim okay people so nothing on that second cast so what i've done i've switched over to the ringers white minis um, and also, while I've been waiting for that rod tip to scream round, I have been listening to the Tackle Guru podcast. So I just think it's nice to have that little bit of background noise. Let me know sometimes if you bring a radio or maybe have a podcast on or something like that. But yeah, I'm hoping this white mini wafter will change um, will change it up a bit for us because it is dead quiet and yeah we're struggling what i might do at some point is i might try and cast down that right margin and see if we can get up through that way but i'm going to do two casts on this white wafter and then if we don't do all on this white one i'm going to go back to his original spot and try and get it as close as i can and then i'm going to go down the margin because i do need to chuck a ball of um, pellets in that margin and feed it up and then we'll go back on the pellet wafter and just do a nice little underarm cast to see whether or not we'll be able to get a bite from the margin but yeah so far i'm not very confident everyone i do wish i'd have brought some more wafters because i did have the multicolor ones but i thought you know i didn't want to take too much but sometimes you should always take more so yeah, I don't know why I didn't do that. Bit silly, but just one of them things. One thing I will say about today is that I am really, really relaxed because the action, though, is honestly, everyone, it's terrible. Um, I'm not going to lie. It really is 
bad. Um, <laughs> there's not a lot happening um, whatsoever. It's very, very, very steady going. Um, this is the fourth cast, I want to say. Yeah, the fourth cast. And I've shortened down the wait time to 15 minutes. I've cut five minutes off because we're just getting no liners, no knocks, no nothing. I have been feeding the margin up just down here. So right down there, I've chucked in some bait. And I think I'm going to have to go to that margin at some point because honestly, out that far end is just terrible. Everyone, I've moved on to the ringers, um, white wafters, and not a single nod of a fish. It's um, it's tough. It's tough. It's very, very difficult. And um, as the day goes on, the confidence does start lowering. I'm not going to lie. The confidence does start diminishing a little bit just because I think I can't see a bite coming anytime soon. Everyone, I really can't. And I think, I don't know, I feel like we're going to have to really work for it today. I'm going to move back onto the pellet wafter when I go on the short line because I definitely think swapping and changing the baits are definitely not going to provide us with any sort of bites or what have you. I am seeing a lot of bubbles out towards the middle of the lake. You know, like probably, if I were to hazard a guess, maybe about 13 metre out. I am seeing quite a lot of bubbles um, out that way. Now, whether the fish will move down this end, and obviously as the day goes on, it will change. Because obviously sometimes in fishing you can have a terrible start like i'm having and then it does change and stuff again i'm just seeing bubbles i don't know if you can see them right there again in fact you can see them just there so that is my plan is to go out into the middle with a pellet wafter so i think what we're going to do we're going to stretch the legs we're going to take a bit of a walk let me know if you people fish throughout the winter and it's very tough and i think you have got to be very selective with the venue that you go to and also you have got to be on it with what bait you select. Like today would be a great day for the um, waggler with maggots because on this lake there's some very good perch in here and stuff. But it is nice to just stretch the legs, have a bit of a walk, you know, because we've been sat there for quite some time. I think I forgot to... Um, to reset uh, to stop the stopwatch but as you people have seen before in the video nice little um, waterfall so I am going to have a look because it is quite clear on the bottom of this lake I'm just going to see if there's any fish round about this way and I'm hoping them ducks will pee off because if they don't it's going to create all sorts of problems for me so I'm, I've come down to this end peg here just to see normally you can see for um, if there's any carp in here Now at the minute I'm not seeing nothing on the bottom I don't know if you people can see that Because of the reflection But you can just see a little bit on the bottom Of the lake bed But Yeah I definitely don't think they're going to be this shallow I mean this spot in summer is like The best because it just works really well but yeah i just don't fancy having a lining while them ducks are there so i'm hoping they're going to move as soon as up to the other end what i should have done is got me polars and put them on so, so it would have took the reflection off the water but yeah them ducks are still <laughs> they're still there and they've probably ate all that bait i've put in anyway so there was no point and i think that gives us now a good chance to move swims but yeah, just sometimes you get a feeling in fishing with the methods you're doing, the potentially, you know, it's not going well. And for me, I really, really feel like it's not going well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my polos on. I'm going to walk back up there to see if I can see any fish moving around up that section. And then I'll rejoin you people and let you know if I've seen any signs. But I think, like I said, 
this margin I've been feeding up down here is going to be his best shout. I'm just hoping the ducks don't see the feeder go in because as soon as they see that feeder go in, they'll be on it and they'll end up getting bloody hooked. And it's going to ruin my swim, really. It's going to spook the fish. So, yeah, I need to wait for the little buggers to go, to be honest. Okay, so I've got the polars on. And I'm not joking. When you put polars on, it's like bloody X-ray vision. You know, you can... The difference when you've got your polars on is unreal and it's great for like i say i have uh, quite sensitive eyes so i should probably wear my polars more than i do but my god that has made that has made a big difference so i'm gonna come around here i'm gonna see now if i can see any fish like i said i keep seeing bubbles but yeah that's so much better i can I can see quite a bit more, but again, I'm not seeing any carp down at this end. I think, personally, we'd be better moving, but the only issue is there's a few people down at the other end. So, I just can't help thinking, and I'm hoping them little bugger of ducks, they're actually moving down to my margin swim, where I've put them pellets, which I'm not too pleased about. But, yeah, they don't seem to be... They don't seem to be moving anytime soon. I've just actually thought on as well. I don't know why I've never worn polars when um, when I've been doing my lure fishing, which is quite silly, really. But yeah, I'm just not seeing anything at all. I just can't seem to see any fish. Because, um, like I said, normally you can see if the I definitely don't think they're going to be shallow, folks. I definitely don't think they're going to be shallow, but wow, I can see a lot of that lake bed. I think if anyone leaves down at that bottom end, I might make a move and, you know, because I'm just not confident at all in um, in this area. Okay, so I look like a bit of a skier, by the way, don't I, with the bloody uh, balls on top of the beanie hat. So I have seen that it is deeper, further down the bottom end, so I'm actually going to move but not too close to the um, other angler that's a bit further down. They're probably like one, two, three, four, five, about seven pegs down. Right then, everyone, so we have moved successfully. The only worry I have is this little overhanging tree, but that shouldn't be a problem. It does look more deeper at this end, and I do remember on the Ravenfield Ponds website, it is a lot deeper at this end of the lake and also he's got some i've got some little reeds down here and um right where the overhanging tree is i might just chuck some pellets in that bit to feed up but i need to be careful because i don't want the ducks coming over and uh, being attracted by it so i'm going to move my feeder arm a little bit and i'm going to i've found a little gap in them reeds that i'm going to cast my feeder straight on so hopefully we can get to that but i will need to re clip up because i don't think the current line clip will reach that far so we'll have to do a bit of preparation again but that's part and partial but like i say sometimes if the fishing's not going well and you're not confident move pegs if you can um, and it could just provide you with that fish that you've been wanting a whole day so fingers crossed this move makes a difference right everybody we're in so it just shows you sometimes making that move is a really good idea. And I'm going to show now that the seven foot rod is just doing a little bit of a pull. I've got the clutch set pretty tight, but I am on heavy artillery. That bite come after four minutes as well, everyone. <laughs> this, I tell you what, this seven foot feeder rod people is an absolute beast. It really is. It really is a beast. Come on. Come on, fish. Let's not lose this because, you know, we don't... I'm trying to get his head up. Oh, he's gone straight for the snags. He's in him. He's in him, unfortunately. Wow. That is a beast. <laughs> That's got some weight behind it, that bugger. Absolute cracking fish lovely scales as well really good really nice fish so there we go it just shows doesn't it moving can make that big difference and that was on 
the golden stuff, everyone. You know a spot's worth trying when you're getting little knocks and and stuff. And then, like I said, lo and behold, that quiver tip just went real straight. There's nothing better, is there? You know, I do like the um, waggler, but sometimes when that quiver tip just fires round everyone, you can't beat it. Fingers crossed we can get another car, but we've saved the blank by moving pegs. Whereas I think if we'd have stayed in that one, I think we probably wouldn't have had uh, a very good day. I'm pretty sure of it. Right, so a quick update. Um, I've had a liner again, but no bite. And this one's been out for about 10 minutes. Now, what I'm thinking, everyone, is that the carp are actually a bit closer in than I think. I do keep seeing sort of like ripples quite close in the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the margin just under that tree because it is good cover for the carp and also with the reeds as well that's what i'm thinking it's not to say that there's that there's no carp out where i am i just don't think it's going to be as quick as the margin and to be honest we have got about an hour and a half uh left of fishing just under it's actually gone really quick today to be honest so what i'm going to do is i'm going to underarm cast it straight under the tree hopefully we don't get snagged up in the tree and then if that goes quiet after a few casts or what have you i'll go back out to the original spot i don't know if that's me moving chair but i am seeing a few taps on the quiver tip so not 100 percent sure and then what we'll do we'll go on one of the white ringers wafters because i did use one up that other end but i think psychologically oh we're getting some I think we're getting some indications on the end of that tip, definitely. It's hard to say what that was then, but they were just like a little bit of knocking and moving slightly to the left. I tell you what, that would be good timing there if we did get a bite while the camera's on. There's definitely fish out towards the far end, but I just feel like the margin might be a little bit better, and especially as it gets later on in the day the margins are sometimes good the only thing i wish i'd have done is put a lighter feeder on but i just completely forgot it's been absolutely ages since i've used this seven foot daiwa matchman feeder rod but it held up so well and we are carp that big a lot of people would think just because it's a small feeder rod that it's not got the backbone with big carp but believe you me this thing is solid as a rock right then everyone so i'm currently in fishing in the margins and i've had no knocks no liners or anything like that so basically what i am thinking is to go back out to the middle where i was but change to a white wafter and see how that goes and so basically i've moved to the right hand side and i'm literally just going in the middle of the lake because i think the spot where i've been fishing has not really produced m much now we're not getting any liners or or even bites for that matter i have just sweetened up my pellets a bit more with this f1 sweet i've just made them a bit more smelly because i think that's what it's going to take to get these fish in I think we're just going to have to really make as pellets as attractive as possible. Um, I'm sticking on the Ringer's pellet wafter. I did change over to the white wafter, but it didn't seem to do anything. So I moved back onto the pellet wafter and I'm literally giving it like nine, ten minutes now because um, time's running out for my session and I still have quite a few pellets left, so I just want to try and get them in and get a quick swim built up. But I think I'm just gonna stick in this peg. I've chose a target with the tree and um, 
that is pretty much all I can do now, everyone. I think... I'm not sure if we're going to get another bite now. I think we've probably seen as lot. It's It's been a tough day, but to be honest, I did expect that. You know, it's one of them where when the temperatures drop, the carp do switch off. It's not to say you can't catch them. Uh, as we found out, we caught a very nice carp. And it's better than going on without a fish. That's what I always think. So, yeah, it's just one of them things today. It's been really quiet. I've not seen much else from anybody else, but again, I don't know because I've been watching all the time, but from what I'm guessing by a few people leaving and going home, the, there's not much. I've just seen another carp swirl just to the right of that tree where I've cast it. I do think that is the best spot that I can possibly be in. And now I just think it's a matter of waiting, building up the swim and see and to see whether we can nick a last minute carp but if you have enjoyed this session definitely leave a like share the video around and subscribe for more of this content because i do enjoy making these videos so get subscribed it's massively important if you're on your tv just pause the video click on my little icon and sign into your account and it oh wow we're in we're in we're in who on oh my god Oh my god, we're actually in. <laughs> I saw it going round. Oh my god, we're into a fish, everyone. I'm just going to put the camera there. Now, unfortunately, everyone, like I said, this is the reason why I want a GoPro, because you can't quite see. I'm going to try and... Oh, it's pulling, it's pulling. Oh god, it's really pulling. It feels better than the, um, than the other one. I'm going to just show you people the bend in this seven-foot rod. Look at that absolute beauty and i just think with them pellets it might have just given us that little bit of an edge and if we can land this one i think it'll be really good i just want to get it away from the swim so i'm very happy with the result and it just shows you sometimes move you know you know whether that's moving swims or you know moving somewhere else i mean look at the bend in this rod it's an absolute beast I just honestly, for fighting carp on, it don't get much better. My only worry is, is he'll bolt for these snags here. Yeah, it's going to go for them now. See, look, it's literally, they're not daft. They literally bolt for them. So I'm going to just try and get it in. Get in the net, get in the net, get in. What a fish. And it's sort of similar to the other one with it having the scales down the side. But that is a cracking mirror carp. I'm loving the dark colours as well. It's just amazing. Absolutely brilliant fish here in Ravenfield Ponds. And you can tell by the feel on the fish, it's so cold. But just look at that, everyone. Such a lovely fish. Absolutely gorgeous. I have no idea as well why I didn't bring a towel, but there you go. So again, towards that green tree. There we go. Pay off a bit of line. I do think this stuff's really good. I do like sweet smells when it comes to fishing. And I just think by putting a bit more of this on and literally going to town, because I think you need ultimate attraction, everyone, especially this time of year when the fishing's just very, very slow and what have you. And then again, finding the deeper waters like where i'm casting now i think is the deepest bit of this lake right then everyone so we've just had a, a big line of the tip sort of went round then come back it weren't enough to strike into um and that's one thing that i used to do back in the day i literally used to strike at liners so it's like as soon as the tip moved a little bit I sort of, you know, struck into them. So the temperature is really dropping as well. But I still think there's more fish to be had. And like I said, I still have some micras left. But I'm definitely going to stay in this spot and just try and build up the swim as much as I can with the micras. But I don't think it'll be long before we'll be in again, hopefully. So yeah, I'm the only person left on the lake now. And um, everything's been a bit quiet, like I said. I did feed up the swim a little bit over there with some pellets I had left and, um, you know, just to see if I could get any sort of reaction. We had a tiny, 
in fact, we had a tiny liner and then we had quite a big liner. But apart from that, everyone, that was about it. And uh, then I've just got it chucked in the margin now. So if I keep looking down, you know why, because I'm uh, hoping and praying that tip will fly around, but I can't see it and stuff. But to be fair, two, de two very decent sized carp, I think is a good day, me. I mean, we've had to work for it, everyone. We really have. We've had to work for us bites. And I think, to be honest with you, it's getting to the time that I think a bomb and a wafter would be a good idea, sort of like a six-inch hook length with an inline bomb and then sort of chucking that out. I do think that would be a better idea and what have you, because with a bomb you can sort of search around the lake without chucking feed everywhere and you can sort of just pick the fish off one by one so you could search in the margin, you know, you could search out into the middle of the lake and... You could chuck, like, chuck a little bit of feed out, but not a lot, like, get some tiny nuggets of pellets um, where you've chucked your bomb and then do it like that. But, or maybe a mini method feeder, like a really small size one. I think even though this Diver one is small, it's still quite large. So I think next time we could do with a mini um, method feeder. And also you can get the Ringer's pellet wafters in a mini size, which I think that would be a good idea. But I'm not joking, everyone. This little mini Daiwa rod is absolutely brilliant. And I love this thing. I think for most commercials that we have got like quite a smallish lake, this thing is, is brilliant for like finesse work, you know, for getting your feeder up into them tight snags and stuff. It casts so well. Um, like I said, the only mistake I made, I've, my feed is a little bit too heavy, so it didn't. Ca I couldn't get it right close to the bank and what have you, which were a shame, but that's just one of them things I didn't realise. So next time, we'll get a smaller um, feeder and stuff, and, you know, I think that's the way to go on here because, like I say, winter sometimes you've just got to... You've got to try and pick them off. You've got to try and search for them carp and that. But yeah, I've had a very good session. I hope you've enjoyed this. And like I say, the camera isn't doing it justice, but it is getting quite dark now. So it's time to pack up and leave. And two carp for me is very good. Um, let's say by some miracle in stars and sky, the quiver tip shoots round as I uh, close this video out. I will put that clip in at the end if we can get out. But make sure you leave a big like on this video. Make sure you subscribe for more sessions like this and other stuff fishing videos uh post comments down below subscribe e even if you're watching on a tv pause the video click on my profile picture and hit subscribe and sign into your youtube account because there's a lot of people that watch that aren't subscribed get subscribed it really does help the channel out i want to grow this channel i want to get this channel going big so yeah thank you very much and if you're fishing have a good one